It's your girl Sherry with Whistle Out TV. We are back with a second and final iPhone 12 Pro review. My last one was a little more of my first thoughts. This one I'm gonna be diving deeper into all of the functions like the camera, iOS 14, the body. We're gonna talk about MagSafe. We're gonna talk about what else? What's on my list? The social media problems I was having, all of that. We're gonna talk about that and more today. If you haven't yet, don't forget to like. You can do that super easily below and subscribe also below, comment, turn on those notifications. Every little bit helps, especially since my channel's just a little bit new and we're just getting our feet off the ground. So I would appreciate all the love. So first we're gonna start out with the body of the phone. We're gonna talk about how slick it is because I really do feel like the iPhone 12 Pro is one of the most snazzy devices out there right now. And the main thing that I've been getting compliments on carrying this phone around is not, is that the new iPhone 12 Pro? Which I do get that a bunch, but people are like, can I hold it? And I'm like, yeah, go for it. Take it in your hands, feel around it, like become one with the phone. They, um, everyone talks about how they love how it's square. Everyone loves how it's like the iPhone 4 feel. And some people, some of my friends couldn't even put it down. So. 10 out of 10 on the shape, the form factor, the feel of the phone. I absolutely love it and so does everyone else who's tested out my phone. The next thing I wanna talk about is the material of the phone. So I haven't got a case on this yet, but I will, it's coming in the mail. Thank you, Amazon. Uh, but my back hasn't been scratched and the front isn't scratched yet and that I think goes to show how strong the glass is and the new materials they're using on the front and back. They have a fancy new glass on the front. I can't remember what it's called, but it went through something called the glass matrix and it's super amazing, super strong, which is great because like I showed you in my last video, my screens tend to break easily. But so far I've had it for a week, no scratches on the screen or on the back. However, I do have one tiny complaint about the surgical grade steel. I have just, just been keeping the phone in my pocket or in my purse, like easily accessible and I definitely have some micro scratches on this steel. So this is not as scratch proof as I would have liked. Honestly, it's like a little frustrating, but also it's not the biggest steel, especially once I get my case, that'll all be taken care of. No more scratches will be added on, but just having a few of them breaks my heart a little bit. Um, The other thing about the form factor that I don't totally love is the placement of the speakers. Um, I tend to hold my phone like this. I tend to hold it with my thumbs on bottom, especially if I'm laying in bed and I'm like holding it up above my head, whatever. I keep my thumbs on the bottom. Now I've been noticing some serious audio problems with how I'm holding my phone. So it's just a matter of changing up my grip, but let me turn on some music and uh, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Like the speaker placement, if like your thumb is ever underneath the phone, it's gonna it's gonna mute the sound a little bit. Do you hear that difference? Ooh, ooh, vibes. Okay, gotta turn this down before I get carried away. But do you, did you hear when I was like covering up the speaker, it was pretty muted and then I let go and it was fine. I was just, I've just been having to relearn how to hold my iPhone. Um, I think it's cause I don't have a case on it. I'm being extra careful holding it so tightly, but that's just one thing I've noticed. Other than that though, the phone is flawless. I mean, let's be real here. The phone is absolutely amazing. And my dad also got the 12 Pro. I asked him if he had any qualms with it. So he's like, no, I have not been looking for things to not like about my phone. It was $1,100, I'm gonna love it. The last thing I wanna talk about about the form factor about the device itself is MagSafe. Now, I don't have any MagSafe accessories from Apple itself. I have a magnetic dashboard phone holder. This is already has a magnet built in. I'm gonna see if I can just connect it straight onto there. That was my first drop. I had too much trust in the magnet in the iPhone and it just wasn't strong enough. I went over one little bump, 
tiny bump and it slid and crashed down into my cup holder and that really broke my heart. I, uh, I had had my phone for an hour at that point and MagSafe failed me. So I'm not gonna trust MagSafe ever again and I'm not gonna get any MagSafe accessories because I just don't feel like it's that strong, especially for a car dashboard magnet. It's gonna be strong. I've never had it fall on me before with my iPhone 10. And then in one second it falls off of my iPhone 12. I'm just gonna get another magnet to put on the back so I can connect it to my dashboard. But uh, that's the only thing with MagSafe, I'd say is just be extra careful with what you're trusting to hold your phone because it may fall. In my last video, I talked about how the camera was like almost too advanced for me and I take that back. There's just a few little quirks in the software that I had to get down. But when you're in photo, <laughs> That's, it's where it gets kind of confusing. In the upper left-hand corner, you can tap this little circle with a few lines in it, and it will take you to a bunch of different other options. You can change exposure, you can change uh, if it's a live photo or not, you can change orientation, if you want it a square, if you want it a rectangle. It took me a second to figure out how to get out of photo option when I was getting ready to make like a custom shot or changing my exposure and brightness and shadows. I could not figure out how to get back to the main page to switch to video or slow-mo, but it's really just this arrow in the top center of the screen. And then you can make all your other changes by clicking this circle in the top left with all the lines dashed through. It just takes a little getting used to, but I have faith in you that you guys can do it. Now talking about the camera, this brings me to its performance. And at first when I was using my camera, I thought the colors looked a little bit more dull than I'm used to. But then when I compared it to my iPhone 10 pictures, and I'll show you some side-by-sides, with the iPhone 12 Pro, I feel like the colors are much more true to what they actually are. And compared to what I'm used to, they're a little bit cooler. The 12 Pro, when we look at depth of field, when we look at portrait mode, when we look at the videos versus iPhone 10 and the photos versus the iPhone 10 all around, I think it is just night and day. It is so much better. And especially when we're talking night mode or low light pictures and videos, the iPhone 12 just blows the 10 out of the water. And I am so excited to be able to take just almost professional level photos with this camera. Now, the other thing I wanted to touch on just super briefly was I made a big stink about how Dolby Vision HDR was not working for me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Now I updated my apps and I was a little patient and after a day or two, everything was normal. My videos were uploading just as they normally would have with my previous iPhone 10 and I have stopped getting DMs and notifications about how my videos are so blown out. But I did a little bit of research and found that Dolby Vision HDR videos, because it's a new video format, when it's uploaded to these apps, their software just wasn't able to handle it. So it looks blown out and it's not just me. It's a lot of people who use Dolby Vision HDR. Okay, let's talk about iOS 14 because I was able to dive into it a little bit more and I really like it. I wanna talk about Siri first because S, we're just gonna call her S so I don't activate all of your iPhones right now. But S used to take over. When you would ask her a question, she'd be like, how can I help you? And then you'd talk over each other and it was awkward and you can never get your question in and then you just end up getting frustrated and you just stop using Siri altogether. At least that's what happened to me. But when I was testing out Siri, I actually, I, I love it now. Now you, all you need to do is hold the side button and she pops up right below and you can ask her anything like, how long will it take me to get to the dentist? It is making my life much less stressful because I do actually use Siri quite a bit as like my personal assistant. So. I'm stoked on that update on iOS 14. And I also talked a little bit about the widgets and the shortcuts in my last video with iOS 14, how you can kind of customize your phone to be aesthetically pleasing to you. And after watching a few YouTube tutorials from like Tech Me Out and a few other channels, I've decided that I am not a fan of some of what iOS 14 has to offer. For instance, creating shortcuts on your phone 
to make your, your style you, to make it more customizable to you. It's really cool at first, but then when I started testing it out on my phone, to make it aesthetically pleasing, you have to go and download the icons that you want from the internet, and then you have to go through all of these steps to make it for a specific app on your phone. So like, let's say a clock, if you want like a pink clock instead of the normal picture they give you on uh, the app store. You have to download it, apply it, and then when you open clock from here on out, it opens up the shortcut app really quickly and then moves to clock. And I don't think that's worth it. It's too high maintenance for me, but that's the only thing I really don't like about the customizable options. I think the widgets that they offer, the standalone widgets that you don't need to use for shortcuts are absolutely amazing and really, really fun. So I'm really excited to kind of play with those some more and really customize my home screen some more. You can apply a widget to open up your favorite playlist whenever you open up your phone. If you have lots of Bluetooth devices connected to your phone, you can add a battery widget that will show you how much battery power is left on all your, your Bluetooth connected devices. And the reason I like these widgets so much is because it breaks up the monotony of just square after square after square. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, and they're actually helpful. What I'm gonna do is take my the five most widgets that are available that I would use most often and kind of disperse those throughout my pages. And I think that'll break up the monotony of it for me and just give me a little bit of customization that I need without going so above and beyond with the shortcuts um, options for customizing on iOS 14 that takes so much time and energy just to make it so aesthetically pleasing. And the other thing about iOS 14 that I really like is you know how you have those apps that Apple doesn't let you delete that you can't get rid of? Now you, can, you can't you can delete them, but you can move them to the app library. And what that is, it's, on, it's after all your main pages, there's the app library and they will sit there. That will be their home. And so you don't have to stare at them. You don't have to go into any other folder that you might make for all your useless apps. You can just long hold and press move to app library and it will get off of any of your main screens. I'm always trying to delete these useless apps because they just take up space on my phone. But now they'll still take up space, but they won't take up space on my main screens, which is what I'm really excited about. We just shove them to the end. Okay, I think that's it for my deeper dive. Now I don't usually do phone reviews, but I'm gonna try and get into them more and more as phones come out, just stepping outside of my comfort zone a little bit. If you liked what you saw or you just wanna hear more from me, I would appreciate a like and subscribe and turn on those notifications, you know the deal. Thanks for watching Whistle Out TV, I'm Sherry Riggs.